Yep, welcome to Football Family Feeds. Let's all get into a wrap, yep. Hi guys, welcome to Football Family Feeds. Yeah, but I'm not a happy Zane, I'm not a happy man. Yep. So this is, we're doing a half-time review. We don't usually do a half-time review, but today I felt that we needed to do one because, guys, this isn't good enough, you know. Awful play. The only people who come out of that half with any credit, I'd say Pulisic yeah. tried hard. Kovacic did okay. Um, didn't do that though. Yeah, Georgina was all right. Um, uh, Zuma, you can't blame me for any of anything. But for for me, a mount was all right, I suppose. Um, for me, the two fullbacks are so. Yeah, and the other people were all right. Well, Alonso and Escobeta. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for even jokes, then. Those fullbacks are not good enough. I'm sorry. You know, Aspilicueta, after a shaky start to the season, I thought he got back to being to, up to the level that we would used to see him play at. But today, he's been badly exposed when he's come up against quality wingers. They've got two good winners in Quincy Promise and um, Ziek. And, yeah, they are showing us that we... Obviously... There's talk about a January being able to get players in January. If we can get a decent fullback, I don't care if it's a left back or right back, we need to get one because these full we're not going to win anything with those two fullbacks that we got in our team at the moment. I'm sorry. You know, Asper Quetta, first minute of the game, stupid free kick to give away in a dangerous area. So what happens? They score from it. <laughs> and not to and then after that, what does he do? He does something similar to what he did when we played. Oh, firework just went off there. Mm, that's probably the fumes coming out of my head. My head's exploding actually. It wasn't actually a firework. But the thing is, he does the same thing what he did against Manchester United when was it Martial? What was he doing? Ball watching from that other cross? No, it was Alonso. Uh, uh, that's for the yeah. Ball watching to, get, to let the guy go in and score the second goal, a Quincy Promise. He's not once looked at the ball. Not, not, sorry, not once looked at where Quincy Promise is. Quincy Promise just goes in behind and gets. gets. So he could have stood, or he could have, he could have even looked at where he was, stepped across, and Quincy Promise would have been offside. He, so he, he, he just was looking, he, he, he didn't, he... That's my head again, sorry, my head exploded. Yeah, but so he didn't even, he wasn't, he was not aware of where his man was at all. Yeah, but he wasn't aware of where his man was. Yeah, he's meant to be an experienced, he's a captain and our most experienced defender. And that was unforgivable by him, a schoolboy defender. If it wasn't a kid doing that, you'll say, okay, put it down to an experience. But he's one of, he's our ex most experienced defender. You can't defend like that. And then Alonso, absolutely awful. What the same thing he did against Manchester United, he's doing that again. Um, does, what, the guy's going nowhere. Ziyech is going nowhere. He thinks he's playing rugby. He jumps on the guy. Is he doing rugby or wrestling? He's in the wrong sport. It's, it's not, that, stuff, that wasn't football. And he, the guy was going nowhere. So what did he do? He gave away another dangerous free kick in a dangerous area and they score from it. And uh, Kepa, I think he was at fault for a couple of the goals as well. Bad positioning for that free kick. If, if he was no, but enough, I thought it was bad positioning for the thought... free kick. And then I think, what was the one, um, not the Zuma one, but the other one, he could have... Uh, he could have commanded his line a bit better for the, the header. So what could have to do doing the top corner at Rashford? Yeah. Um, because uh, Kepa's quite Kepa's good. short, yeah, no, you can't this is height thing. But I may be being a bit unfair on Kepa Kepa because I'm just ranting. But furthermore, not only do these fullbacks not know how to defend, they don't even know how to attack neither. Alonso, we had a brilliant at three one, he could have made amends. We had a uh, Brilliant play. The ball gets passed through to Asper de Quetta under no pressure whatsoever to get a good ball into the box. What does he do? Hit the first man. So what is he in the side for? He can't defend and he can't attack. So what is he in the side for? Then, not to be outdone, Marcus Alonso on the other side, one cross over hit and then the other cross. No, both crosses were over hit. He had two opportunities to get the ball in and he over hits the ball no, both sides. Wasn't no, he hit it. He, he whacked it across like he's hitting the ball at 70 miles an hour. That's a ridiculous cross. 
awful. So if you've got defenders, full but bets, you can't attack, there, the... can't defend. Yeah, but that's by more luck than judgment though. What are they in the side for? I question it, you know. Sometimes a fullback may be a good attacker and may be exposed um, defensively. Sometimes they may be strong defensively, but don't know how to attack. But you can't have, they, today, they haven't done either. They haven't well, defended well and they haven't attacked well. I so what, it's pointless. Sorry, Frank, Reese James got to come on second off. I know what this YouTube video should be. What? This YouTube title. What should it be? Ranting at Alonso and Henderson. Exactly, yeah. So, I'm not happy. What? Why are you agreeing? Yeah, but, but it was a rant. I'm just not happy with him. I'm not sorry. Frank, show a bit of balls, please. Put on um, put on Reese James. Get Reese James on the second half. That guy, even if he, you know, I can I can accept if he makes a mistake. You know why? Because he's young, yeah? These guys have seen it. They've worn the T-shirt. They've got no excuses. Well, Reese James has one. You always make light or something like that. Yeah, so I'm not happy. Stars make light. Yeah. So let's hope they come out in the second half and put up a bit more fight because that second, that first half, sorry guys, it wasn't good enough. So Frank, boys, let's get it together in the second half. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be posting this before or after. So this could be part of the match review, but this was our first half match review. I'll probably put both pieces together and we'll do a second half one of them. So over. But yeah, this boy might be going to bed now. It's, it's a school night. So second half of the match will just be me. But I'm hoping that I'll be having a different persona. I'll be happier because I'm not happy with that half. So, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the second. Uh, bye. Subscribe and like and turn on all notifications. You'll be notified when I do another video. This is why we love this game of football. <laughs> My emotions have been, I've been having roller coaster emotions, up, down, up, down. As disappointed as I was in the first half, I am so elated about that second half performance. Okay, we had a bit of fortune with the two double sending off, but even before they scored that, which I thought was gonna be the killer fourth goal, we came out in the second half with lots of determination and we got the deserved draw. It's a pity we couldn't get the win. We had a couple of chances. I was up in the air screaming when Asper Quet put in what I thought was a winner, but then only to be disappointed by the VAR. But um, after 4-1, I'll definitely take a 4-4. And uh, I don't know, I'm just so, so emotional at the moment. But as I said in the first half, I did a two, two-part video. This is my second half now. I had a rant in the first half about our fullbacks. And he listened to me, Frank, so he put on Reese James. And you can see this guy is a real deal. What a difference that Reese James made. He's a proper footballer. Every single thing he did is passing, is defending. He's a strong defender. His crosses were fantastic and obviously he pops up with a gold as well to a cap a fantastic second half display and we looked a much better side with him as a right back and even Asper Quetta, who I was very critical of in the first half when he moved to the um, left side he was so much better as well he actually scored a goal had one disallowed for VAR and he um, put in a couple of decent crosses as well so he's a probably better at left back than he's at right back. Alonso's finished at this club, I'm sorry. Um, you know, as you can see it, he was all over the place in the first half. He comes off and it's no coincidence that we look a much better side when he wasn't in it. But yeah, the determination from the guys, the passion, the skill, the drive, yeah. As I said, fortunate with him, but still, you still got to take the chances and we did. Let's talk about Jorginho as well. Ice cool penalty taker. Hazard, we thought Hazard's penalties were good, but this guy is a real deal when it comes to taking penalties. You know, he doesn't look like he's going to miss, especially that second one. The second one, he was under a lot of pressure because uh, we had a two sending off. We had a bit of a long delay between the kick, but he showed no nerves and he put the ball in the back of the net. So well done to him, uh, for Jorginho for that. Um, Hudson-Odoi came on, looked lively, he was good. But 
Um, in all the euphoria, in all the delight of coming back from 4-1 to 4-4, there's still a couple of things I've got to moan about in this half. The first one was, oh, not moan, but there's obviously not moan. The first one isn't a moan, but it's a concern. Because most of them went off, which it looks like maybe a bad ankle injury. Let's hope it's not too bad, because um, we're going to be missing him. So it's good that Kante's back now, but Kante's a different type of player to um, uh, Mason Mount. We may see Pudisic playing at number 10 because he's got back into the number 10. He looked pretty good in that number 10 role. So maybe we'll see that against Palace, but Palace are quite a physical side. And sometimes against a physical side, um, Pudisic struggles. Mason Mount would have been ideal for that game. So let's hope it's not a bad injury. We've got the international break after the Palace game anyway. So hopefully if he does miss the Palace game, um, he's got the international break to get himself back again. So we'll, we'll see what the uh, what the problem is after after the game once he's had a scan or but the other major gripe I had was the a decision of extra time four minutes are you sure really the penalty alone and the two sending off that was two and a half to three minutes alone the review of the VAR that was another minute we had four sub we had six substitutions in that half so how so that's usually half a minute per sub. So where did that four minutes come from? That's scandalous, I'm sorry. That the minimum should have been seven minutes. That's the bare minimum what should be played. I don't know if they felt sorry for Ajax or whatever, I don't know, but four minutes was scandalous. Um, my other gripe if I had one, it was uh, the lack of a cutting edge because Tammy Abraham didn't have a shooting boots on today. There was a few chances that he had that he couldn't take. Bashiway came on at the end, he had two glorious chances. The first one, brilliant turn, Drogba rest again. I like the way he does it, but he needs to finish like Drogba. His control was Drogba rest, but his finish, he just didn't put enough purchase on the ball. Good save by the keeper, but not enough purchase on the ball. And the second one for me was the one where he scuffed it right at the end. Do you look at the difference? I don't know if tweeted something with Ajax, the clinical. When Van der Beek scored, that's what you call a clinical finish. You know, we at the time we were on top of the, of the game. They break away, quick passing. He has one chance, scores. So, that, and that's been the story of our season. Of, um, we, we've created so many chances in our games, but we just do not have that cutting edge to put it put it away. So it costs us the win today, and it can cost us more than the win in other matches against the top quality of teams. Um, I love Tammy as a striker, don't get me wrong, but in the window, if we can get a top, top, top notch striker, who can in these big matches make that difference? So, like, we've been linked with the likes of Tino Werner and uh, Musa Dembele, so we'll see how those pan out, but it'll be nice to have another top notch striker on board, you know, because as I said, when we're on top and we haven't had many chances, we just need to be more clinical in front of the goal. But, how can I moan on a day like this? I can't really because 4 1 down to come back 4 4 it made amazing. Another shout out just before I go apparently, some of the fans left at 4 1. Embarrassing. 4 1. It's, it's, we got half the game left and Chelsea were playing quite well. So, sorry guys, you got what you deserved when you, left, when you missed the, the three goals, the comeback. And apparently they're trying to get back into the ground. If I was the stewards, I wouldn't let them back in the ground. You support your team till the end. You don't run off when the going gets tough. Yeah? So, make that be a lesson for you all. The game's not over. It's not... If it was 4-1 with four or five minutes to go, maybe you've got a train to catch or something. Okay. But, 4-1 with half an hour to go, with Ajax's defence as leaky as ours. Come on, guys. You've got to do better than that. So, anyway. Um, onwards and upwards. We've got... Tight group now, seven points for us uh, and Valencia and Ajax. So we need to get a result against Valencia. That match day one, Ben want, want that to come back to haunt us because we need that victory against Valencia. We beat Valencia, then we've topped the group because our head to head is better than uh, Ajax's. So get that win against Valencia and it's happy days. So see you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you on our next.